welcome back to my channel and welcome to a review that quite honestly if you had asked me one two years ago if I was going to be doing I would probably think you were out of your mind I have reviewed or rather roasted one other palette at this price point from this particular brand I sort of did a swear off of those palettes at that price point because I had heard from quite a lot of y'all that the quality was rather hit and miss. And as the majority of you know, I don't really have the budget to be spending over a hundred dollars for a palette that, you know, might be a miss. But today we are going to be reviewing the $129 Natasha Denona Trio chrome palette. Now I gotta admit, when I first saw this shiz teased on Trend Mood, I was like, F me of is this gonna be one of her $65 palettes because y'all know that I have all three of those I love them I think it's a fantastic formula I love the mattes I love the shimmers so I saw this and I was just all sorts of F me up $65 this is such a sort of different color story vibe than what she usually does I was absolutely ready to get that review it and have this be my bomb diggity shiz net. Cause you look at it and you're like, oh boy, you got this beautiful section of green. You got this lovely pinky purple row and then sort of like a corally light pinky orangey peachy situation. Very much by vibing with the lip and blush sort of um theme I've got going on for this video. So I was like, okay, I'm totally down for Natasha Denona to be doing something a bit out of her wheelhouse. And then I found out that this was going to be a limited edition $129 palette. And honestly, the only reason this shiz is in my hot little hands is because I started an OnlyFans and I I am literally using the money I have made on my OnlyFans to purchase this palette. And y'all know I am down to try greens from honestly just about any company. I will admit though, when I first saw this and she was all like, trio chrome palette, you know, she's getting all, all fancy, all bougie, all like, I am a high end brand that is creating a new formula that is going to break boundaries and the makeup community. And I'm sitting here thinking for $129, you could probably go to like JD Glow and Clonida Cosmetics and just get you some triochrome eyeshadows on their own for this sort of price point. So is Natasha Denona really effing up the game with these three triochrome eyeshadows? No. Not really. Indie companies have been doing it for a lot longer and typically at a lower price point. But we are going to be reviewing this today. I am wearing, I will admit, I started with using this, this shade here, which is Androdite is a little disappointing, but I just went all really simple, starting with Ion, then I went into Vert, and then we finished that shiz up with Scrap right here. Obviously using Scarab all up on that lid. And then on the lower lash line, just a mixture of Vert and scrap. So pretty simple, pretty whatever. As always, we got the long sleeves going on. I think that's just gonna be a thing. Bring y'all in a little titchy bit, like I say, so you can watch me sweat in real time. All right, we're just gonna go whoop, whoop, whoop. For any of y'all who've seen my reviews, you, you pretty much know how this shiz goes. So we're gonna start with scrap here, which I will admit, her mattes do feel really nice. If you're going in on a mat and you like it to feely feel good under your fingertips, this is the formula to get down with. Then Androdite, which was heckin' powdery, like really, really chunky powdery. I used it, you're not gonna be able to see, but there is a nice little divot with a crap ton of brush strokes in it. Then. The real reason we came to the show, we have Scarab right here, which I feel like is a formula that, oh, shiznit, that looks so 
Whoa. Okay, that is what like finger swatch dreams are made of. Like that is it. But I do feel like this is a shimmer formula that is gonna be conducive to hard pan. And so we've just got them right here, here, and here. Ah, uh, that, wow, that is, that is like the perfect, perfect shade of green. It just about matches perfectly with my wig. That middle shade there is pasty pasty as all get out. It really, it was, it's, that shade is disappointing. Then last for this row, we have Ion and Vert. I will say Vert is probably my favorite matte in the green row. I think it's like, a little bit different, a little bit unique. I feel like that's sort of a tone that a brand like Milk Cosmetics would come out with. And if you're really attracted to these sort of green tones here, I would recommend getting their uh, 420 palette. Then we're gonna go on into purples. We have Naga right here. I really love the tones of these purples because I feel like sometimes purples can skew a little pink, whereas for me, this is sort of a true royal purple color theory. Then we've got manganese, 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 majasnese, manganese. I'll put it up spelled out and one of y'all can phonetically inform me down below. Once again, an absolutely beautiful shade of purple. Then kinetic, which is the bad boy right here. Got that shiz going on right here. For the pasty pasty, this shade is so much better than this one right here. Like swatching, you can see kind of what it would be, what you'd think it was supposed to look like. And this one is just a lot better formulated, nowhere near is just kind of piff and not there disappointing. Then right here and right here. Got all that shimmy shiny up in there. Then the last two here is Rideau and Tungsten right here. I do like the sort of elemental earthy sort of aesthetic and vibe that they're going for in this palette. There we have that right there. Kind of really, really reminiscent to like if you have the like little mini Lila palette, it looks a lot similar to this right here. Then last but not least, we have Vertex, which is probably the closest to a pasty pasty uh, non-existent setting shade. Lutonium, which is a beautiful mustardy uh, mustard. And then Color Flip, which is so so pretty, like it's like, it's so hard to show. Maybe we can do it a little bit of, yeah, see. Y'all know that's the kind of shade I do not advocate for. Then we have the plutonium, which y'all know that's my shiznit. And then right there, it's like a purple, pink to green. I would honestly say that out of the three of these triochrome quote-unquote shades, this one is the one that visibly shifts the most. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily need this one to shift at all. I just absolutely love it. Then last but not least, we have got Garmon right here and then Diatonic. It's like very space agey sort of thing. And here we have those right there. Two really nice shades that I can really get down with. So you can sort of see when you have it like this, the color story looks a lot less broken up, whereas you have like the green row, the purple row, and whatever kind of row this is. Whereas when you see it out in this uh, layout, it kind of has, I think, a better flow than just concentrating on each of the rows individually. As for standout shades, obviously the trio chromes are absolutely Absolutely stunning. This is the sort of situation if she were to take this formula and run with it and give us more than three in a palette and justify that as being $129 worth, that green is probably now one of my favorite greens in my collection. I absolutely love these two mattes. This one, uh, 
it can be a little patchy. You need to pack it on a fair amount. This one, absolutely, utterly disappointing. Love all four of the matte purples. The purple row is a win for me. This one, just no. No. Love this, love this, love this, love this. So for the majority of the shades, we're doing pretty good. All right. Let's start out with the pros. One major pro is sort of what this whole palette is kind of banking on are these three shades, and these are three of the most beautiful shimmers I have ever used. And I will say that admitting I don't own any JD Glow, any Bitter Lace Beauty, any Clinona Da, any of those really well-known indie brands that are known to do multi-chromes and do them really, really well. I don't own any of those, so I'm going into this in sort of a uneducated manner. But let me tell you, these she three shades are absolutely stunning. This green... Mm, what dream, what green shimmer dreams are made of. I love the purple. Now I don't, um, is she, this is, this is the, my one question. Is she calling the palette trio chrome because the eyeshadows, the shimmer shift in three different colors, or is she calling it trio chrome because it's got three chrome shades in it. That's the case. I honestly think that's kind of a lame way to present a palette. But that being said, if she were to do more with this shimmer formula, I would be absolutely happy. If she, this is saying a lot because y'all know your girl is a matte lover. Matte's build, the backbone of a palette. But if she were to come out with like a whole shimmer palette of this formula, I would be real hard pressed not to buy that shiz because this is a beautifully smooth, ethereal, easy to use. It works with a brush. It works with a finger. It works with that little silicone glam topper I have. And they are just absolutely beautiful. This is not doing them any sort of justice. Like I said, this green is just absolute perfection to me. I also love this one. You can't really tell, but it's pinky purple, and then it kind of has a little bit of a green shift to it, depending on how you, you know, shift it. Purple is also really, really, really pretty. I am sad that the where the mattes are a little bit failing are the greens here, this shade being a little bit patchy, this shade being here. The purples are all absolutely beautiful and nice. I'm very happy with all of those. This is absolutely nothing. I'm probably hardly ever going to use it. But the rest of these are really, really nice. It is not, in my opinion, her uh, $65 palette matte formula is superior to this. I'm not sure what she's doing different and why that formula is superior to the one in $129 palette. But these shimmers are definitely something that is out of this world. The shimmers in her $65 palettes are also really, really well formulated, so I'm not sure what she's doing with those, but whatever she is doing, she's doing it right. Now, that being said, a con is most definitely, this is $129. Y'all know that I've spent that much on an eyeshadow palette before, but that is my Viseart Grand Pro palettes, and those have an absolutely impeccable, flawless formula. They are beyond stunning. I find that Viseart, for their main permanent palettes, do not have a lot of hit and miss in their quality. And so that is sort of a formula that I know is one of my tried and trues that I'm a lot more willing and a lot more likely to spend my money on than a limited edition $129 Natasha Denona palette. But obviously I did, and that's why we're here right now. The hard hard thing for me to really try to like, because I do not like coming on here willy-nilly and being like, y'all need this over a hundred dollar palette and it's the bomb diggity shiznit. I will say that about my Viseart. I have, but I also say if you don't got the money for Viseart, ColourPop is really good. I love a lot of less expensive uh, indie eyeshadows. So it's sort of like, is this really worth 
that $129 price point because I have this. I'm going to use it. I enjoy it. I think these three shades here are absolutely stunning. The mattes are not terrible. They're something that I can use and I can work with. They're nice. They're good. I feel just, you know, high end mattes, probably a little bit better than Too Faced, you know, Urban Decay. I would say they're sort of in the maybe the uh, Lorac department where they're fairly pigmented. They have a fair amount of of powdery kick up, but they blend really well and look really nice on the eyelids without like caking up or anything like that. So I am going to use this. I have it. I've purchased it. I'm not sure how I would return it because I'm in Tennessee and I don't know how to, I guess I could mail it back in if I wanted to. But in my current living situation, I literally have no way to get to a Sephora. The nearest one is like an hour and 45 minutes away. So I'm going to keep it and I'm gonna use it, but I'm also gonna tell y'all that as much as I'm gonna enjoy using it and as beautiful as these shades are and the mattes that I like, I just don't think this is a palette that stacks up to $129. If this had been 65, I'd been like, yeah! You got two kind of duddy whatever's out of the thing. It's got these bomb diggity shiznit shimmers. Go out and buy it. Because this is sort of the eyeshadow quality that I would expect from a $65 eyeshadow palette. But for something that is literally being, you're being charged $130 for, I'm expecting a more sublime, a more seamless experience. And I also understand that this is a limited edition palette which means there isn't going to be as much quality control in this. They can have it like this and then, you know, later down the road, if it's not amazing, you know, they don't have to keep making more of them. Although I will say, how is that a justification? I don't understand because these three shimmers are immaculately formulated. Just take the time and energy that you did to do these and do it for the whole thing. So at 65, like I said, had this been the 65, I'd be like, oh yeah, the colors triochrome F me up. But at 129, which is literally, I think that's like double the price. I mean, if you really really, really, really want it. I would wait for like, uh, this, I got this with the, I waited for it to drop so I could use my 20% off. I would not purchase this at full price. Maybe wait for it to like go on sale. Like I said, I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to use it. I really like those of a hundred. It is not a palette that is worth every single penny of $129. It just isn't. It's not that it's bad quality, but for what you're paying, I feel like there should be a little bit more oomph, a little bit more straight up across the board quality for your buck. For $129, there should not be any dud eyeshadows in here. There shouldn't be a little acru, soft, slightly tonal setting shade. There shouldn't be one shade that's a little bit patchy. If I'm spending $130, it had better be abject perfection. And that's why I'm okay with those Viseart Grand Pros because I have two of, because the quality on those are absolutely immaculate. And as I keep saying, I really enjoy this. This green shade here absolutely Fs me up. I love it. I know I'm going to be pulling into this palette for other colors in this, the mattes as well as these. I'm going to use the absolute shiz out of these. But on sort of a palette whole, if you're going to spend this kind of money and you're really doing this for those trio chrome or whatever sort of eyeshadows these are, I feel like you would be better invested if you were to take that money and invest it in an indie brand. I will leave some of them linked down below that literally do this shiz the right way. Take that money, invest it in some of those if that's really what you're going for because although the three shimmers in here are amazing, doesn't make the palette don't $129 for three, three fancy, fancy shimmers. I have it. I'm going to enjoy it. I really like a lot of the shades, but for $129, I cannot with good mind say 
yeah, go out and buy it. I put my 110% stamp of approval on it because for that price point, all the mats should work absolutely perfectly. And for that price point, there is absolutely no reason that they shouldn't. All right, all y'all, there we have that review. I would love to hear what y'all have to say about this palette below. I know that Teresa is Dead got it. I think that Karen Harris got it. I think Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. A lot of the YouTubers in my cute little small um, beauty YouTuber community, a lot of them have purchased it. I have I haven't watched any of their videos yet. So it's a palette that I feel really got a lot of press and a lot of people interested. So if any of y'all have tried it, would love to hear your thoughts down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mwah!